Hello. Well, today we're going to put the timer thing to rest. For now. So, um, the idea I was trying last, last session, it didn't work. And, you know, when I finished the stream, I just uh, dropped those inches and, and I tried something in anger. And you shouldn't be coding in anger, but I did it. And it looks like, um, yeah, the previous clock was kind of okay, I think, because so the frequency is is 18.2 hertz, right? So yeah, I thought it was it was going to be a little bit not too much, but it's 54 milliseconds. Um, and it kind of it may be okay. So what I did uh, last yesterday, uh, you know, I didn't want to do things out of the stream, but yeah, I mean, it's a small change. So I changed the comment here and I added a function called timer wait. And it's, you're going to see, uh, I mean, it's super simple. So basically, uh, I kept the ticks in place because that could be useful uh, and I'm still exposing it. Uh, it could be useful, for example, if, if, if I do some random numbers, that could be used as a seed. Uh, so I'm keeping that one and I added another one that is ticks too. And I, the only thing I do in the interval handler is increasing both, right? So this is absolutely unchanged. We didn't change anything at all. I didn't change anything at all. And the timer Y, the only thing it does is that you provide a value T uh, and every T is 54, you know, it's about 55 milliseconds, which means that the minimum, the minimal amount that we can wait is 54 milliseconds which is the thing that I thought it would maybe was not a great idea because it means that, you know, is I mean, it's 18, 18 frames per second, the, what I can update the game. And I thought that might not be, I don't know. I thought it was not enough, but then I thought that maybe it was okay. Again, on eight bits, you know, very often you do 16 frames per second. Uh, yeah, but this is a PC, so I thought maybe it's not enough. Um, because obviously, um, in 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 those eight bit machines, when they are PAL, if you can get uh, you can get to fifty five frames per second, that's amazing. And in case of NTSC, if you can do thirty, that's amazing, right? So I thought maybe eighteen is not enough. Uh, but then I implemented this very quickly and. Based on the main we were playing with uh, last last session, uh, I made a little bit of changes here. So basically, uh, I have I have this function now free all, so we can free the timer and the keyboard handler um, because they are to the interrupts now. And so I'm not using this at all. So it's the same thing we had the uh, yesterday, right? The only difference is now this timer weight is the one we call it here. So if we don't call the timer weight, so this is the faster it's going to go, right? It can go faster than this. If I set to one, which is likely the value I'm going to use to update the game. This is the speed. Which I don't know if it's too slow. But if you see this compared with, with the uh, test I was running last day, this is stable, it's constant, right? We can make it slower by doing Instead of 50, what would we say? We'd say about 50, 
yeah 50, 54 9 so about 55 milliseconds so that's going to be now 110 because we wait in two right but it's constant it's not changing the speed so that means that it's, it's, it's working the way it has to work right so 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 if we get uh, we do this calculation for example so it's 18 yeah okay so if I do 18 I can measure it's going to take a second on to do each update I think it's fine and it's stable. I mean, it's not a second. See, I press escape and I need to press it. But if I, if I do the type of data I was expecting, you know, I press escape and the response is fine. So I think the control, the controls are going to be absolutely fine with this. Um, anyway, I, you know, I, I mentioned this the other day. Um, that perhaps this could be okay, but then I found the channel two on, on the pit, and I thought, well, we, maybe I can use that, and I can get any resolution I want. But I think this is going to be okay because, yeah, the controls are going to update absolutely fine, and so it means that so with this. With this, the way it is, it means that whatever we do in a loop, including the AVSync, has to take 58, 58 milliseconds. Sorry, 55 milliseconds. 58, 55. And if we take longer than that, then then we'll be slowed down. So depending on how fast we are you know yeah but this is probably too slow <laughs> so that's this is 9.1 frames per second I mean any animation at this level of the day is going to be awful so we'll see but for now I think I can keep working with this I mean, obviously we are printing, so that means that the so that means that the console is slowing things down. But if we do this, uh, which is not going to work because we need to enable this again. All right, okay. So we are in VGA. Yeah, I think it's fine. And, you know, we can always go back to this. So that's one second pair color. And again, I need to press escape for a second. Yeah, I think it's fine. So, so I guess I'm going to keep this one and for now I think that the for now I think the timer is fine we can continue working with this and then you know if it's not good enough then i would think something else i i mean there's nothing to think the only thing i can do is uh you know the program the clock and do like allegro is doing or whatnot and that's it there's nothing else i can do I was thinking that perhaps we could be piggyback on whatever um, the Sound Blaster here is doing, but 
I don't see here. So there are functions here that you know to play mod files and stuff, and and it's okay. Uh, but then the only thing about I don't like about this library is the license. Uh, that I'm not sure if I like it. See, it's copyright freeware. What, what does it mean? So copyright, it means all rights reserved 1995 by Joel. Cool. So freeware, I don't know what it means. Uh, it looks like it's open source instead, but you know, 1995 things were a little bit confusing, right? So you feel to do with it as you please with the following conditions, right? Uh, if we make changes, we need to send, send him the changes. He maintains his patches and release a new better library. Well, this one is in, was released. It's the latest version that is available. I don't know what is the release date, but I don't think this guy has got... No, it's version 05, so it's 95. Doesn't get more, much, a lot of patches, I think. Uh, you create a new library based on this library give credit. I don't know who's Eric because he has the copyright, but oh, special thanks to Eric Jorgensen. All right. Okay. We're not going to make a new library, so that's fine. You may use this library in a conversion share with application. However, please let me know about it. Give me a little credit and send me a copy. <laughs> so... So, user on your own risk is not guaranteed to work safely in any computer. It's not guaranteed to be suitable for any specific purpose. If the above restrictions do not conform the laws of your state, you may not use this library. Well, I'm not in a state because I'm not in the United States, so who knows? So, yeah, it's kind of mm, not great, isn't it? So, the only benefit is that it is for DJ GPP straight away. So, if I don't use this, I will need to either find something that use it, is using it, or do my own. And I don't have time for that. So, hmm. I might hold my nose a little bit with this. I mean, I'm going to release this as, as an open source, whatever I do, right? And it's not going to be com commercial. I think it's going to be, as I always do, it's going to be free to play, free to download, and open source in this case. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I might try to send him an email. Uh, Eric is a Smigol. Oh, Eric is a Smigol. So I'm not sure who is Joel. Um, yeah, there must be some way of contacting Joel. Anyway, so this is a library I was thinking about using, but I may not use it. I don't know. There must be other other things that we can use. Uh, I think other libraries have been imported to the JGPP, but you know, it's going to be all the stuff like 95, hopefully not as old, but likely. Cool. So, um, so let's, okay, uh, this is I'm going to change because it's going to be, uh, I don't know, what is the qualifier for static goals? Oh, apparently it can go there. What happened? <laughs> mm, I like this. Well, I think there is. There must be either a problem with those box. Okay, let's try that again. Hmm. I think it's, it may be those box being funny. I hope it's not because something I'm doing. Hmm. 
Yeah, someone was mentioning the other day, and I have this here to use DOS Emu instead of DOS Box. Perhaps I should be doing that. My only concern about that is that um, when I release, if I release, if I release a game at the end, um, well, DOS Box. People are going to use DOS Box. I use DOS Box. So they're going to expect to work in DOS Box. So if it doesn't work in DOS Box, it's not great. Is it? So, mm, mm. so okay. So, so, and here we so I need to say. And do we commit main? I mean, I'm going to keep changing it. Okay, let's commit main because the old version is not doing anything anymore. Cool. So... Okay, cool. Uh, well, it's not the first time that those boss crashes. And I don't think I was using some of this stuff already. So, hmm. Not completely sure. Not completely sure it's my fault. It could be. Could be. Definitely could be. Okay, so this one is better than I do like this. I thought it's not, it could fail, but it's not going to fail, right? So better like this. Cool. Um okay, so that's one thing. Now the other thing that is kind of important uh, so we can start working on something that looks like the game is we need a blitter so a blitter is okay let's find a blitter well it's a software one right but the blitter is a circuit sometimes a coprocessor or a logic block of, on a microprocessor dedicated to the rapid movement and modification of data with the computer's memory. So the ablator can copy large quantities of data from one memory area to another relatively quickly. So blitters in computers and video games. I don't know why I call him blitter because you bleed. I don't know. The Mr. Computer, Mr. Personal Computer. Yeah. Anyway. So basically, what we're going to do is functions to copy stuff uh, from memory to the VGA. So my original idea was to basically... Um, so what I was thinking is, you know, how much we can do in the, in after waiting for vsync yeah but i don't know i mean it's complicated let's let's do double buffer we can do double buffer with the vga so for that i'm going to read this try to understand it and then and then implement that so yeah so why double buffering or page flipping um so what you know what i was thinking is uh, well, I can just, so every time we generate a new frame, if, if there is some background I need to preserve, I need to erase any sprite, sprite so any pix map that is on top of the background and draw it in a new position. So, you know, how much of that I can do before there is stealing because, you know, in a frame. So I don't know how fast it's going to, you know, how much time do I have? 
and and I think that's the kind of stuff I would do in a bit if I didn't have double buffer. So I thought, well, can we do double buffer? Well, we have a lot of memory because we are in protected mode. So 64k for a for a for a back buffer is not the end of the world. But the problem we have with that is that a problem. Hmm. So basically, uh, we work with a back buffer. So we draw in those 64k of RAM that is not video memory. And we draw whatever we need to draw. We compose the image, the, the, the scene, right? And then we dump that into the VGA. And we could be doing it like this. So this is a mem set. We could be doing a mem copy, right? Uh, but I don't know how long, how, how, how fast is that? Because, so we need to copy 64K, right? Because we can do more complicated things. For example, um, on the CPC, my first tiles and sprite engine I, I I I wrote it it splits the screen in cells and it tracks the cells that are dirty and it only copies into video memory the things that change which you know it has com it has complexity and uh, it, it has overhead but in the case of the Anson CPC uh, because it's a cell 80 CPU of 4 megahertz uh, so basically that complexity is still faster than copying 16k of, of of memory into the video memory right so it's faster to do it like that so do we want to do that here i probably don't want to do that here so it will you know yeah 64 well it's not 64k but 64,000 bytes so yeah so it writes in the double buffer then we wait and do the main, main copy so using a double fa double buffer would be fast if instead of having to copy the information from a double buffer to video memory address yeah exactly so this is a back buffer by what is usually called by software so you you use the CPU it's software to move things from one place to the other whilst when you do this by hardware what you do is uh, for example in the Amsterdam CPC you can change the memory address where the video memory starts so you can have 16k and 16k and make uh, you say well the, the video memory starts on this 16 case and you can draw in the other and then making this the back buffer visible is just changing the pointer it's very quick right you don't need to move it you don't need to move the memory to copy the memory so it's not by software it's by hardware so if we can do that that will be great so page flipping with page flipping, there must be an no video memory for two screens. So the screen is, uh, you know, so the screen size is 300 to 200, which is uh, the 256 colors. So you need the double. So 128,000 bytes of video memory must be available. So instead of drawing the visible area of the video memory or the visible page, the program draws in a non-visible page, which is the same thing we were doing. When it finished, the program swapped the visible page pointer with the non-visible page pointer, which is what we do with the Amsterdam CPC. Now the program clears a new place, non-visible page, necessary. Yeah, whatever. You know, it's, you change, you swap them, and you keep going. So one problem with this is mode 13, which is the one we're using. Only 64K video memory is available, even a video card has more memory on it. So they usually have 256k because they support all the modes that is not uh, mode 13, right? Even if it has 4 megabyte video card, um, mode 13 can only access 64k. 
There is a way, however, to tweak mode 16 into a 256 color mode that has a total of, you know, this amount of memory. It's a page flipping is possible. This undocumented mode is sometimes referred as mode X or unchained mode. I don't think it's undocumented. So you look at the documentation of the VGA chips and, you know, uh, it is actually, I think, I believe it's documented. It's just that, you know, back then, I mean, this document is from a long time ago. Very long time ago. Um, so, how old is this? In 1986. <laughs> the Surface VGA primary is out of date. Yeah, we know it's out of date. We're doing out of date stuff here. Uh, it's still, yeah, this claim for the outer material is more 10 years old and it's not my best work. 10 years old. Not anymore. Some of the tests could be worked differently, clarity and accuracy. Yeah, fine, 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 fine. We going. We very thankful of having this. So okay. So structure of unchanged mode. Okay. So the VGA has 256 kilobytes of memory. Many Super VGA cards have even more. But even in those cards, VGA most can only access the first 256, except for mode 16 which can only access 64K. The reason is that the mode 64 is a change for mode, which basically means that every fourth, fourth byte of video memory is used. The reason for this is because the linear structure of the video memory, yeah, I mean, in the case of the CPC, you have kind of similar situation. The structure of the video memory is, is bizarre. Like, why not linear? Because, you know, the chips they use for the memory and whatever, you know, the hardware rules, really. They had what they had, and that's the design that they implemented. So it's kind of the same, right? So when we turn off the chain for mode, it allows the program to access all the video memory, but involves more complicated programming. And that's what we are into, complicated programming. So in unchanged mode, memory exists in four 64K planes. Each plane corresponds to a specific column of video memory, plane zero, contains pixels 0, 4, 8, plane 1, 1, 5, plane 2 contains, yeah, fun, fun stuff, and plane 3 contains blah, blah, blah. All right, so to plot the positions 5, 7, plan, plane 1 is selected, and this is the offset. Cool. Since unchanged mode is not a standard VGA mode, it cannot be set in it cannot be set using BIOS functions, uh, BIOS function code. Instead, certain VGA registers had to be tweaked. Which is okay. I mean, we used to use the BIOS, right? Ba basic input output. But in the CPC, the first thing you do is disable all the ROMs, which is, um, and the CPC is called uh, firm firmware. It's not called BIOS. But the first thing you do is you disable everything and you access the hardware directly. That's it, you have all the memory for yourself and nothing is in the way. So yeah, it's okay. This is not a problem. So uh, it involves two VGA controllers, the sequence controller and the CRT controller, which is CRTC. Okay, so yeah, VGA register can be very complex. It's pointing to this document that I've been reading and it's now, it's here. And it has too much information. It's probably distracting and confusing. Uh, I, I don't plan to. I think we're going to. I'm going to follow this this document and then try to adapt to whatever I want to do with it, right? I mean, hope, hope you know, expecting it to work, right? So plotting a pixel in a change mode is a tad bit more tedious than in most settings because the proper plane has to be selected. To select a plane, right? Blah 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 to the VGA map register where plane is a value from 0 to 3. All right. The map mask register is located in the 2 in the sequence controller. To select the map mask register, right 2 to the sequence, yeah, okay, fine. And then the map mask can be found in the sequence, blah, 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 right. So, in mode 13, the offset is calculated with this. Yeah, this is how we calculate. So. You know that a line is 30, 320 pixels, 
So you multiply that by your Y coordinate and, and add the X. It doesn't change mount memory is arranging for planes. The offset is unchanged. It's calculated as this. There you go. If a value order than the power tool has used to select a plane, multiple planes will be selected. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. So you can select multiple planes. Okay. Okay, so, so you enable the unchain mode, which gives you all the memory. Okay, so, but we only need 64K, right? So I guess this is about, we can swap between plane zero and plane one, for example, and so when we are writing in the back buffer, we will select the plane that is... Uh, okay, so the, the question is, can we make one plane visible? How, how does it work? So this is plotting. Okay, page flipping and change mode. <sighs> First, set up two word size variables to keep track of the visible and non-visible pages. These are offsets to video memory. Okay, then do all the drawing to the non-visible page. For instance, it's a pixel which has to be plotted. Okay, we select the plane. Yeah, but you don't need to do this all the time, right? So basically, when you do the flip, okay, fine. So with this is how we write into the plane that is not visible. So given the X, why given the X? Why given the X? Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. So, okay. Oh, I understand now. So, because it's not unchained, we need to do the work of selecting the plane every time we put a pixel. But that is not related to the, the stuff that is... So... Cool. I think I understand. So basically, every time you plot something, you need to select the plane for that X value. I don't, I'm not fully sure I understand, but let's, let's assume that I understand. So we select the plane and we draw. When all drawing is finished, it's time to switch the bridges. The new offset is set through two register and the CRT controller. Right. So what I think it happens is you have all the memory, but in order to have all the memory, you need to deal with the planes yourself. So you need to choose the plane. And so basically non-visible page, and then when you do the the pla the switch the switch the the flip right so one the visible is in zero and this is the other one and then you swap them and then you set the address of the visible one and that's the one you show now here are some things to consider when using page flipping the problem was using interrupts it would be advisable to disable interrupts before the page was flipped and enable them afterwards. Is an enter recording the runtime? The screen could be temporarily distorted. Yeah, because obviously you need to set this, and it's right into you know if there is an interrupt in the in the middle, and your interrupt handler is taking too long. Yeah, fine, it makes sense. When the offset register are changed, the page flip doesn't occur until the end of the next vertical retrace. So after the page is flipped. The problem should wait until the end of the vertical release before drawing the non-visible page. 
So when the V-Sync starts, you do the swap. And then you wait until it's finished. Otherwise you can't draw. So in the follow role, instead of referring to the page as visible and invisible, it refers to them as visual and active. It draws animated balls around the screen using both double buffer and page flipping. And then opens the results. It defaults to draw eight balls. A unique number of balls can be drawn by specifying the number of the command prompt. This is simple 16 balls, but drawn using the command to change 16. Uh, okay, and then he has some benchmarks here. So results with 16 objects. So mode 13 with double buffering. It took five seconds and, uh, and it was 23 frames per second. Which is okay. Because we can only do updates I I I at 13, right? And change, yeah, but it's not. Maybe it's not doing anything else, and we had to have some game logic in there as well, right? Then in change mode with page flipping, so it took you know 34 frames per second. So it was 1.4 times faster. Mm -hmm. Now the page flipping in change mode was faster than double buffering in most in this example is not always faster. This program was created to prove a point, depending on the number of pixels drawn and the number of OP and yeah used on change mode. Mode 13 can still be faster. The program was tested ignoring the vertical retrace on various number of objects to see the relationship. Yeah, okay, so when you get to 64 objects... Yeah, but it's, it's, relative. it's relative, right? Anyway, um, so most 13 is going, you know, 4 objects... 8 objects takes about 4 seconds... And yeah, it takes over to 64. Hmm. One of the reasons most routine is sometimes faster than in change mode is that the time in each for each frame, the selected frame change four times for each ball object. Yeah, obviously, because you are going to write to four different. And also plotting things. You need to plot them in a way that you minimize the amount of plane switching. So I guess you need to draw first all the pixels of plane 0, 1, 2, and 3, right? Um, only 4 times per frame. Yeah, there you go. So this guy is doing it already, as I'm saying, very efficient. It will have increased performance. Oh, no, it's not doing it. So, could have been created so the plane 4 times per frame, which would have been performance, because of P and B are very slow statements. When the same program when you change mode, the number of being run be used in the right back. Okay, correct. Then other unchanged modes. The call below is somehow including another section on this site, but it's right now, but right now, it's here to show you how to run a different unchanged mode. Okay, and this is the one showing modes. Hmm. Yeah, and this has kind of, because this guy needs to load the images, right? So, yeah, so near PT, so it's doing the same thing we're doing. Then VGA. Where is VGA? Where are you, VGA? So, yeah, it's doing the same thing, right? It's one extra zero here. Yeah, it's, it's reading the ticks to measure, right? Fine. 
So yeah, he gets a VGA and then he loves a VMP. Then set and change mode. And he tries to get, yeah, it makes one of the different graphic modes. Set the palette. Then draws the lead man. Hmm. And in draw the bit map. It selects the plane for everyone. So I guess in order to make it faster. Uh, no, wait a minute. No, it's doing it properly. Draws a bit map. It was an external for plane format to erase the drawing process. The plane is changed only four times. Yeah, well done. Ah, uh, I don't know now. This seems to be a pain. And I'm learning, and this is mm, maybe I should just have a back buffer. And because again, I mean, yeah, I was doing some some numbers on Mastodon today, and although. Ah, we have it here, I think. There you go. We have one month, 10 days and six hours. Yeah, but in a month and 10 days, I'm not going to do, you know. So I was calculating in, in Mastodon, being optimistic. It could be like, I could put on this like from 24 hours to 30 hours. So yeah, I mean, it's not going to be the biggest and most amazing game, right? So, does it really matter if I do double buffering by hardware or not? Hmm. I mean, okay. So, let's think about this. So, we could be doing I mean, the benefit is, is that it's simple, right? So we have a, a, a buffer and then we do, for example, so we can do, for example, uh, how do we call this? Uh, no. Glitter age, right? And we can do this. So bleed the race, what else? Uh, bleed, bleed. Day. Maybe and uh, it's going to be this, right? Um no, it's going to be main copy. And I never remember the order, so we're going to look so screen buffer and size okay so now I guess so do we need to have the screen here mm 
well, we don't need this anymore, right? So open fame buffer can return this and we keep the screen here and we hide everything. Right? So open frame buffer. And then we say screen. Is this and then success. So if no If we fail to open the frame buffer, then it's error, right? And now we are not going to access the screen directly. Cool. So open frame buffer, we get the screen, then memset and memcpi, right? Now CR to zero, yeah. So probably we don't need this anymore and we're going to use it here. Uh, do we need STD leave? Uh, okay. Let's let the compiler compile in. Okay. Yeah, we need the standard leave. Okay, it's happy about it now. Okay, so erase and update. I'm going to detach the wait sync from the update. I think. Um, and it's going to be like this. And then we can say bleed erase y wait it in sync and then bleed update. So did I not? So um, I mean, it, it would be better if I had thought about this beforehand, right? Instead of doing it in this, but why not? And then a bit of date. Cool. Well, this is using the bad buffer. And we have more than enough time. I guess one thing we could be doing in the timer is what? We could be telling if we are slow. We could have debug into a file, maybe. And if we are being slow, so basically, if we get here and the ticks is already T or bigger, ticks two is you know T is smaller or equal to ticks two, we could be logging and saying, yeah, we're slow. Uh, we can do that later, I think. So bleed erase, bleed update. Fine. So that's fine. So I would say we can erase with zero. We can do this, right? And it's all zero. Fine. Cool. Um, so now we can do, we can do lead, so sorts and 
then we're going to be uh, no we need to do x and y i think x y with a height <laughs> okay so yeah okay so this is going to be i think the function we're going to use to bleed the sprites and now i'm going to look at so this is another project i'm working on um for a fantasy console and I implemented a blitter here. And I think what we're going to do is pretty much the same. And so right into VRAM. Uh, do we do the same? Why not? Anyway, so it's going to be two loops. Okay, so what I'm thinking is I want to do clipping in the blitter. I definitely want to do that. So, because why not? So, so I need to keep giving me that. So, why from zero to I don't even know what I'm typing. It's been a long day, by the way. So. It's not from zero, it's from Y to is from Y to Y plus A. And then we increase J. So and then it's going to be from X. Yeah, it's the same thing I did in the other one. So from from uh, it's less than x plus way. Increase this, and then if y is less than zero, and that's not the case, it has to be integral. Is this going to work though? Uh, so that is 64,000 and the maximum we have, no, we need to do more, which is fine. It's a, we are in a 32-bit machine, right? So, so it's an integer. We wanted to have sign, sing, sign, because if it's less than zero or y is bigger or equal to 320 or j is less than zero or j is bigger 320 sorry 200 then continue and this is doing clipping so we can go over the border and nothing's going to happen and then in buffer we're going to do basically this sorry j and for that we're going to do okay not not really so the byte is going to be something like this Because we need to move the pointer of the source anyway. Cool. So that should. Uh, and this is a semicolon, not a colon. colon. So now we can just. We 
you can just bleed right and what are we going to bleed we're going to bleed uh, we had a sprite we put the other day right so let's take a look to it and this is not the right size so let me fix that there you go so this is a test so we can just bleed this right so okay so it's going to be in we have data right so it's going to be blah, 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 blah. Binary, right start, and then let's put it in zero, zero, and it's going to be 256 by 24. Okay. Ah, uh, because I just I just mistyped again. Uh, where are you, BGA? So you in, you in, you in, you in. And yeah, obviously I did as well in the BGA because that's where I was copying it. I don't see anything here. Why not? Binary sprites start. What did I do wrong? Why? What did I do wrong? X plus Y. Oh. No. No. This is okay, isn't it? And then we get a byte from source. And increment one byte. And then this byte it was goes into the buffer. What am I doing wrong? I can't see it. There are no warnings. There are warnings? Yeah, there is a warning. Um, sync conversion from integer to in a oh, because we can't do, yeah, otherwise, we can't, it's, it's too big, too big, okay. Yeah, okay, fine, fine. didn't change it here right he's complaining about that although I don't expect okay so it's not bleeding anything <laughs> <clears throat> binary is price star this is okay right so we we established already that that is uh, the array of the binary data. So we set in the palette. So we erase ones. I mean, in reality, we just need to do this once. But yeah, we want to we want to try to to put some stress in here right so huh so this is going to be zero zero 
Oh. No. That was correct, right? No, it wasn't. Okay, so... Well, that's it. So with this, we have a blitter. We can bleed things. Alright. So... Oh, this is the, the EGA palette. Uh, okay, so this is the one we use here. Um, let's do something to play with it, right? Something quick. How big? No, oh, want to do it center, please. No, okay. Fine. So select, sharpen the. We have a circle now. Just for a test, we don't need to do a lot, right? But okay, so that is zero zero, and it's going to be oh no, it's not going to work. Hey, hello, racing the beam. How you doing? It's not going to work because anyway, let's let's just have a sprite. Uh, no, we may not want to do that. So this is not. I mean, it's comfortable. You know, it's nice to do this, but. Mm. It's not great. I mean, it will be... I mean, having a sprite sheet is going to be better. Instead of having... Although, it really doesn't matter. Let's do that for now, but... I'm, I think I'm going to hate it before we finish, so... Um, select... Uh, well, how do we crop to selection? selection okay for now it's fine so this is 24 by 24 so that is fine um so what do we do with this i mean we don't want to erase everything right all the time so we can do We can do 24 by 24. So BJ, BG, right? And then we can have 16 and uh, X. Pen and Y can do N as well. We can do X, Y, and then we can do SPG. So that one, so this is erase, draw, and then we can do X. Uh, let's do, for example, uh, 
increment x is 1, increment y is 1, right? So we can do x plus dx, y plus dy, then if x is bigger than, okay, is equal to 320, or x is equal to zero, then ex change the sign, right? And for y, for y the same, and that's it. That should move the ball slowly on the screen very very slow and actually that's not right so minus 24 something like this and because the timer is the timer we have so that's this is the speed that we're going to update things so you may not want to move it at this speed so Let's do two, right? And it's two hundred. Anyway. Ooh, that didn't work. So, what's good? Why not? Uh, it's because this is wrong. We can't use. I mean, sorry. I'm I'm still in a a bit world with a smaller resolution. <laughs> Anyway, it's probably better if we use uh, um, it's probably faster if we use 33 bit number anyway. Um, what did I do wrong? Oh, okay, here, sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's not the smoothest animation ever, right? So... It's not smooth at all. It's kind of... It's kind of bad. So, if we don't have the weight here... Yeah, but that doesn't have that doesn't have any limit on speed. If we start doing things, it will go slower, right? But that's not what I wanted. Anyway, well, that's a blitter with double buffer. I mean, we could be calculating the frames per second that we are getting with this. Perhaps. Okay, so there are some things here we want to change. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to hate myself before this is finished. Um, 
So this currently expects the sprites to be like this. But I think it's going to be better if we have a sprite sheet. And with the sprite sheet, uh, obviously it doesn't work because we expect sprite to be one sprite. So, so we have X, Y, and we have the beginning in source. So we can do it like this, really. Uh, so instead, it's going to be source, and it's going to be source, and what? Uh, with and hate so basically this is rubbish now yeah it's not good to do it like this um, what do I do do I do I, I do I do the calculation? Okay, let's try to do the calculation. So, so it's going to be with and hate only. So that means that for the clipping, it has to be like this. Which is not great, is it? Hmm? And actually, we don't really need to do this. Let's just see to the right thing, shall we? This is a good compiler. I'm not using an old and crappy one. So. So it's going to be X plus Y and then Y plus J. And now here is going to be Y plus J. Yeah, but we need to know what is the size of the spray sheet. Ha! So it's kind of easier if you have only one sprite and all the frames going down, which is what I did in the in the fantasy console, and that that works fine. Um, but then it's kind of annoying to split all your sprites instead of having a sprite sheet. Uh, and because yeah, it really doesn't matter. We don't have a limit on on texture here. So let's do that. Let's keep it like that. And. We'll see if I hate myself or not. So we can keep this. So uh, image crop to selection. So let's do it. So. Yeah, I don't know. Which is going back to the timer. The timer doesn't work. I mean, we can do... Uh, maybe I'm putting the timer in the wrong place. No, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. Hmm? So what if we don't wait for VSync? I mean, the, the limit is the updates anyway, 16 times per second, right? So 
sorry, whatever. Uh, yeah, 18.2 18 times per second. So it really doesn't matter what we do. Okay, so that's without V-Sync. And this is with V-Sync. I think I like the idea of having a timer. Pinning it to be sync. I guess it's fine. I don't know. Um, no, it's not fine. Well, it depends how we implement v sync. So. So. We wait. So if uh, how how was this working? So yeah. So ba basically, this one if if it's already in B sync, we wait. Otherwise, we enter the start. So this is perfect. It's already doing what we want to do. So this currently is pinned to the to the VSync. So the frequency, whatever is the frequency, that's the speed we have in in the updates. And it's as simple as that. I mean, it's not really. I mean, let me do a full screen. I don't know if I break anything. I broke anything now. Cool. Well, it's bouncing around. It doesn't look smooth to me. Could be the code, could be those box, could be the interaction with, I mean, it's using quite a bit of CPU. If I go to, if we look at this, it's using less CPU than those box. So I don't think it's OBS. I will check when OBS is off to see the ball. At the moment it doesn't look great. Anyway, so that's to Two pixels. If we move one pixel, yeah, it's kind of okay. Yeah, but this is is pinned to the so. Let's draw it and delete four times we're only going to see one but it's going to do the work right is it a slower actually we can make it kind of we can do more work right because that's raising on the screen. It's not too bad. Is it? 
so C equals and we do this. can also decide on a color being invisible, right? So we could be doing whatever. So um, we can add color right now because it's index indexed. So colors, so and mold RGB. Oh, there you go. This is all the colors. So you can get the last one, and we can change it to be something like this. So. How, how can I change that? Can I do something like this? And then... No? <laughs> uh. It's actually doing anything. No. It's giving me an index. Yeah, but this is never going to work. Uh, okay, so... So, I guess I need to... <sighs> so, this is these are the colors. So, mode... IGB... Why is sending me to color history? Ah, okay, because I don't have that. Cool. Anyway. So, no, that's not how we need to do it. So, we need to do... Uh, go back to index color. And then... Duplicate palette. And... What is that color? What is the duplicated, right? This is the color map. Uh, I, I can't see. Okay, so this is the copy. So, so so unexisting past transparent, and then. Edit palette. I can add colors. Damn it. Why not? Oh no, zoom in. Sorry, I'm stupid. Get an entry from the foreground color. Okay. Fine. I was doing it wrong all the time. I don't know how to use this. So we create a new entry. We say 617. So now that one is going to be transparent so image mode rgb image well we can just get this and paint it like this to make it transparent so image mode index it, and we're going to use this one 
and potentially we can just add a border of black because otherwise when the background is black it's going to look but anyway this is the problem with testing things that you get distracted I stopped that it really doesn't matter but it really matters because this is how you investigate and you realize that things work or not anyway so that will generate a new palette and everything and everything and everything and then so so we can do if need to do the clipping for transparent so if b equals Oh, because I'm not including VGA. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, at the moment, it's erasing all the map of every frame. Um, if we only do the background. I don't know. So I do this and then What did I do? Why is it incompatible? Okay. And so picky. Okay, it's happy now. Okay, so now it's not erasing the whole background every time and it feels faster so yeah it's kind of expensive but Anyway, I think we're going to leave it here. Um, 
so it's just a first stab at the bleeder and and see how it goes um i need to think about this i need to think about it because um because yeah i i don't know i mean the timer not having a timer sucks and not confident that i can make a proper game without that on the other hand i mean it's dogs right so nothing nothing should just get in the way it's whatever i do in the game does it change does it change if the computer is slower though no because the vga is going to be the same right so cpu type uh, so let's have a slow 486 Is that making any difference? Three, eight, six, and slow. not change really what does it mean <laughs> i don't know why i'm looking at this so fix the amount of cycles this is where you need for example fix 4000 what does it mean so max uh what is auto guess what the game needs I don't know but it looks like I mean setting a slow 386 seems to be fine whatever that means anyway cool well that's going to be all for today I think I mean, we got a liter um, with some kind of limitations and we're going to have a lot of sprites, which means that we have to add a lot of entries in the embedded data. But on one hand, you know, it's a little bit more work here, but it's also better uh, when we are managing the data because you know we just the sprite is the sprite so if we had for example let's say we have another frame right just for the sake of so image canvas size make it double size and just whatever we don't care really because it's just for testing right so let's make it green ball so if in main I want to use the next one so I just need to do This and you using the next frame so that makes it super easy to manage the sprites and instead of having to need to maintain the coordinates in the spreadsheet you just need you know this is the sprite end of story 
cool. Anyway, so again, this is all for today. See you next time. Bye, 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 bye.